forgive us our sins, bruh. Okay, so I am currently 116 pages into Stay For Me by Corinne Michaels. This is book four in the Arrowwood Brothers series. This is the, ooh, what number brother is he? Is he the third, third, third youngest, I think? Anyway, this is Jacob Arrowwood's book. He is the famous brother. He is an actor in Hollywood, kind of like, he just like landed his big superhero sh uh, movie recently. Um, so he's back for his six months on the farm in order for like the world to be enacted because each of the four brothers, what this book is about is each of them have to spend six months on the family farm in order to inherit the father's will. Um, so this is Jacob spending his six months there and this is his romance with Brenna. Brenna recently moved to Sugarloaf, which is a small town where this is being set because her husband died, I think a year ago, he was in the military and there was like a flight malfunction and he passed away and she has two kids who she put in school and she's a school counselor. And he ends up actually volunteering to uh, direct the play at the school. And so they meet through like a mutual friend and it's their romance. Obviously she's still like a very fresh widow and doesn't like want to move on. Like she's afraid to move on. And obviously he's like, I know I'm not gonna be here in six months and she's a widow and I don't wanna do that to her. But they have a crazy connection right off the bat. She's like definitely like, oh my God, I'm having feelings with someone for the first time. And he's like, oh my God, I like her, but like I don't wanna mess this up. This is so much fun because you are seeing all the other couples again. Like I love reading the final book in these kind of series because you get to see all the other couples like come together to, oh, it's just always so much fun. It's like one in the morning and I gotta go to bed because I got work tomorrow and yeah, I'll catch you guys up then. Bye. Hello, it is now two days later. Have I read much more of my book? <laughs> no, no. You wanna know why I haven't read much more of my book? It is because I am known as a smart human being in the fact, well, that was a really attractive angle. Let me get my chair out. Of the fact of, um, I started a K-drama recently and my toxic personality trait is starting new K-dramas and then letting my entire life be ruled by them. Now, if you're wondering what this, wow, I'm shiny as hell too. If you're wondering what this means, it basically means that last night I started a new K-drama called Falling Into Your Smile and then nine hours later I had watched nine episodes. <sighs> you know, it's just so hard because like the episodes always end on like these cliffhangers. It's like the K-drama thing, they always end on cliffhangers. And so you're always like, next episode, next episode. And it's, it's, just, it's just a never ending cycle and it's so dangerous. K-dramas are so dangerous. It's why, anyway, I'm not gonna get into it. I have continued to read, finally, more of Stay For Me by Corinne Michaels. I'm now almost 200 pages in. I wanted to come in quickly because we just had a scene that I had to talk about. This is gonna be 100% a four star book, possibly plus, depending on how the last half goes. But um, basically they went to a drive-in movie. Did I explain what this book is about? I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, anyway, he has just taken her to a drive-in movie theater to see a movie and you know, they're a little bit frisky, but then it starts pouring and they're in a convertible and he's like, oh shit. And so you know, they put the convertible thing up and then he goes, hey, you should dance with me. And she goes, it's pouring outside. And he's like, every woman should get to dance in the rain at least once in her life. <laughs> what I... <laughs> I'm 24, when do I get to dance in the rain, please? I am actually tapping this like a lot, considering that I'm not like at a full five star, like combined feel at the moment. Like I feel like I know normally within the first like 20% of a book it's gonna be a five star, but considering how much I've tapped this, like it's pretty impressive, my dudes. But um, yeah, that's my really small update. I just realized I never even told you guys what the key drama was about that I'm currently watching, which I'm going to tell you guys about because I want to talk about it and I need to talk about people. Falling Into Your Smile, it's not even a K-drama, it's a C-drama. Oh my god, Madison. It's a C-drama, it's a Chinese drama. Falling Into Your Smile, it's about this girl. She is a, you know, PC gamer, and she ends up being recruited to be part of, like, an esports team. And it's an esports team that um, she ends up joining. She's, like, the mid-solo for the esports team, and it's her joining, like, being the very first professional, like, female gamer for esports. And um, it was really cool. I'm loving it so far. Her like ex-boyfriend is on one of the other teams and she's kind of falling for the captain of her team. <laughs> it's so good, it's so good. I'm loving it so much. And I watch a lot of sea dramas, so this was a really dope one to pick up. It's um, on the US Netflix for anyone who was wondering. So I'm really doing that at the moment, especially if you love video games and like 
um, esports and like professional gaming, like definitely check it out because it's been really dope. And the animations are really cool because there are even clips of like the games like that they're playing like professionally, like the tournaments. So I like it. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go make myself some tea and read this book. Bye. Hello. Okay. So it looks like it's actually gonna rain in a second, but I'm actually about to head out and go get my nails done. So hopefully it, it doesn't rain. Anyway. Last night I did finish Stay For Me by Corinne Michaels. Total four out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed this. It's not my favorite in the series. It is my third favorite out of all four of them. So still really good one, still really loved it. It doesn't have that extra spark that the other two five stars did. And I think that happens. Like I think if I hadn't read this to be comparing it to the other books in this series, it might've been rated higher, but super, super fun. Loved how this ended. I already knew how this was going to end because I read the next series, which spoils how this ends, but I still almost cried. And out of all four of them, book one and book four are the ones that have made me actually like tear up. So that was huge props that even though I knew what was happening, I still was so emotionally invested that I almost like cried my eyes out. So five stars there. Um, I then decided, <laughs> I did start Priest last night. I'm like 50 pages in. And you know, I knew I knew what this was going into it. I know it's like a priest who falls off the girl. And yeah. And um, I, I, I did not. <laughs> first off, it's all through his POV, which is totally different. Like to read something from just a guy's first perspective. But um, I, I was not expecting it to get so sexual so quickly like not that not like nothing between them but like his thoughts like being inside his brain and he's like oh my god i was like oh and then like you know he obviously like he's a, he gets himself off many many times and i was like this is 50 pages damn i actually really like it i was a bit skeptical going in i wasn't really sure how i was gonna feel about this but so far i actually am enjoying it i also went to the doctors this morning had a day off of work got my tetanus shot my t-dap turns out it's been 10 years since i moved here so i had to get my my follow-up vaccine for that which is kind of nuts yeah i also think i might be bruising from my blood test but you know we'll see anyway i'm gonna go hopefully before it rains and i'll keep you guys updated good morning so it is saturday morning well it's almost midday now i was messing around all morning doing stupid shit <laughs> i am officially halfway through a priest <laughs> Um, I finally got to the uh, altar sexy scene, you know, where they have sex on an altar. But the smut in this is like A plus smut, which is like classic, classic Sierra Simone. And like, there's actually been some really great things. Like I'm actually really enjoying this. The only thing that I'm not enjoying is like every once in a while, he has like these like inner feministic thoughts and it just feels a little bit forced in my opinion. Like. It's only like every like once in a while he'll be like, you know, women deserve X, Y, and Z. But he's like, but he's also like a dumb in the bedroom. So like, he's like, ugh, it's, he's like that kind of like counteracts like feminism being a dumb in the bedroom. And I'm like, bruh, like it's fine. Like you can still respect me. Like, you don't have to like try and justify everything. Like you don't need to do that. So like that's like the only thing in this that I'm, I get, it comes up every once in a while. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I really like, it feels forced. So other than that, like, I'm really enjoying it. I mean, it's purely like, like, I mean, if there's a lot of smut and like, it's all back to back to back to back. But I'm very curious to see how this keeps on going. I really like Poppy, Poppy Danforth. She's like a blue blood, comes from a very prestigious family and then decided to renounce it all and become a stripper. And now she's no longer a stripper. She's actually a business consultant for strip clubs. Anyway, I'm gonna keep on going because they finally officially did the sexy sex and so now he's like, well, now I'm condemned for life. So where are we gonna go from here? There is mentions in this book as well about like, you know, the church and underage predatory stuff that goes on in that because his younger sister was a victim of that. And so that is a trigger warning for this book if you do go into it. Oh, oh, got my nails done. Look how pretty they are. I'm like so obsessed with these nails. I'm like living for them. Are they not perfection? <laughs> anyway, that is my little update for now. I'm gonna finish this. Um, and then I think I know what I'm gonna read next, but I don't wanna say it just in case I'm not in the mood. So gonna continue reading. My arm hurts from the tetanus shot. I was wrong. It does hurt a lot. Like I can lift it to here and then the muscle is like, <sighs> Nah, bitch, you're gonna put that back down. I'm like, mm, okay, that's great. So, oh, I just pushed it. Anyway, that's great for me. I'll catch you guys up later. Bye. Trigger warning because we just went over the scene where his sister committed suicide, and so that is 
explained in here how he did find her if that is a trigger for you so i do want to put that out there but for a book that is so like smut heavy one of the things that I think I've always loved about Sierra since I read the Thrawn Chapel Quartet is that she's also just a very lyrical and beautiful writer at the same time. Like it doesn't feel like you're just reading like, I mean, yeah, it is like balls to the wall smut, but it's also like balls to the wall smut laced with beautiful description and like people and stuff like that. Like it's like she's such like a hard author to like pinpoint, you know? Okay, I'm going back to her confession. Okay, I thought I'd come back on because... <laughs> I just read a scene. He decides to finally go like confess his sins for the first time since like he started everything. Um, because like, you know, now he's done all the holes. So he has to go confess. Um, <laughs> why did I say it like that? <laughs> anyway, he goes to um, one of his priest friends and is like, hey, I'm here to like confess my sins. And his friend is like, no. He's like, it's part of like the rules. Like you can't break the rules and not give me confession if I came here come for confession. He goes, no, I'm good. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know who this dude is. He's supposed to be like very, like very old school, like monk-esque. I think he's the one who might be the love interest for book three, but I don't know. I'm very curious, but I wanted to come say that because one of the funniest interactions that we've had so far with like another like priestly person. So yeah, yeah. I finished Priest. Actually, fun fact, let's see if it can focus. I actually end up tabbing um, all of the like spicier scenes, which like starts at page 50 and then just goes up until the very end of the book. Anyway, I really love this. I had a blast. I mean, like it took me a while, like, you know, to kind of get like, obviously like, it, uh, as someone who's not very religious, sometimes like it does feel a bit weird to read this. But like, otherwise it was like a really fun time. And like the, the issues I had at the very beginning, like I mentioned about like the feminist comments he was sometimes making, like just disappeared after a while. Like it was like three times and that was like it. So I, 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 I don't know actually what I want to, what I want to rate this to be like flat out honest with you guys. Like I'm, I genuinely like don't know. Like do I, like I don't think it's like a five star book, but I, I honestly think it's like a 4.5. I think this is like a 4.5 star book. Like there's nothing like, wrong with it it just doesn't feel like a five so i think that makes it a 4.5 forgive us our sins bruh i now need to like put the other books on my tbr to like read this is the only one that i own so like i'm hella like i need to read the rest let me know if you guys have read this series which one is your favorite because I'm so intrigued now to continue on and see everything else. I'm now going to move on to something that's actually going to break me. I'm finally picking up The Resurrection of Wildflowers. Now, if you guys watched my vlog for The Confidence of Wildflowers, you will know that it's one of my favorite books that I've read this year. This is the conclusion to the duet. Um, so I'm not going to be spoiling anything that happens in this, but I will instead give you a lot of out of context reactions. So this takes place after book one, and this is a book one is about this girl and she's like 18 years old. Her next door neighbor is this 31, 32 year old single dad. And she ends up being employed as like his part-time nanny. And it's the two of them having a romance. There is a lot of triggers in book one. All the triggers can be read in my Goodreads review for the book because I don't want to go over them all here, especially since some of them are spoilers for the series. I'm very intrigued to see how this goes because the last 20% of book one was like an absolute clusterfuck, like not even going to like try and say that in like a nice way like it was. And so I'm really curious to see how this book goes because I actually don't know and I'm very terrified. Wish me luck. Okay. This book starts with a six year time jump. A six year time jump. I was, I went to go start dinner. My dinner's like cooking. It's a six year time jump. This book is gonna f You know, if it were not for the fact that I am starving and need to go have a dinner, I would just sit here and continue reading this book because I am 64 pages in and do not want to put it down. I could probably sit here all night and just devour it. It's not even funny. I can already tell this book is going to 100%, 12,000% ruin me. I'm only 64 pages in and I have used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven tabs, seven tabs and 64 pages. That's more than one tab every 10 pages. What is that telling you? I mean, like, I'm not even surprised. Like, I loved book one so much. And like I said, this series is not going to be for everyone. This series, this duet is not going to be for everyone because of the triggers that are in it. Okay. It's not. I understand that, 
but for some reason this works for me and people can hate me as much for it when they read this and hate it. That's fine. But for the people who read this and love it like I do, there's something about it. I just, I can't even, and Macaulay is writing, Macaulay is writing, oh my god, everything that this does for me is just like, the lines, there are so many things, I just keep tabbing, like she's got the most tabbable shit in the entire world, I don't even know what to do anymore. Okay, I'm gonna go eat some pasta and then I'm probably gonna devour this. Ow, my arm still hurts. Okay, goodbye. Oh, 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 one more thing. We actually get his POV as well in this book. You only got Salem's POV in the first book, and this one you're getting Thea's POV as well. Game changer. It's always a game changer when you get the dude's POV. Like, can I just say, oh my stars. Woo! I'm so intrigued to see how this goes. I am. Okay, now for realsies, I'm gonna go. Hey. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, so I wanted to update you guys. I'm currently halfway through this book. I'm still tabbing it. I actually just ran out of tabs. So I had to start a whole new one for purple tabs because that is how much I've gone through and done this, clearly. I'm loving this. It is so much fun. I don't want to obviously give anything else away because like I don't, you know, it's a duet. To say anything about this book would be like spoilery. But it's going well. I don't know what the conflict is going to be because like a lot of the issues that they have had have like slowly been getting resolved. This is so addictive, so bingeable. I'm just loving this book, but um, I'm very curious to see where it keeps on going. So I wound up with you guys. I'm about to head out. I filmed four videos today. I needed to film three more, but I ran out of time. So I have to go. I'm getting um my lips done today. I have no qualms telling you guys because in my next couple of clips, you're probably going to see my lips looking weird. But yeah, I'm going to go and I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Hello, hello, hello. So it is, I am shiny AF. It is Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Uh, it's been like three days since I've had my lips done in case anyone wanted to know what it looks like three days later. I have just a little bit of bruising here. I don't know. Does anyone care? Maybe. That's what the bruising looks like. Finished the book last night. Finished. Here she is. Look how tabbed that is. Look, just so tabbed and so floppy. I really enjoyed this. To be, to be quite honest, like not much really happens. Like it's, I, it's hard to explain. Like I enjoyed this and it was a really quick read. Not a lot happens in it. It's just kind of taking place, you know, six years after the first book and kind of everything that happens. I don't, know, don't want to spoil anything, but I enjoyed it. It was still really fun. Um, it was still a good conclusion. It's still a duet that I really do enjoy, but there are just those trigger warnings in this that, you know, people need to be aware of. So once again, those would be my Goodreads reviews. If you do have any triggers, do check that out. And yeah, basically I enjoyed this. I think it's like, I think book one was a five. This is probably like a four. Like it was just really enjoyable and fun and I enjoyed it. Nothing too special happened in it, but yeah, it was still good. Um, I'm just gonna end this vlog here because I need to, and I'm not really reading anything else at the moment except for books I need to read for work for like marketing campaigns. I've got three books I have to read at the moment for work. But um, yeah, that's basically gonna be it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like button down below. If you wanna see more of me, please go to my channel. And until next time, thanks so much everyone. Bye-bye.